we are going to get into who we think are the top five quarterbacks in this year, 2021, the NFL draft. There's been a lot of conversation about this, a lot of pros and cons. But first and foremost, if you're coming here again, we want you to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and make sure that you hit that notification bell so you get all of our new content as soon as it drops. But without any further ado, Demarcus, let's start at the obvious number one, the people that the person that everybody says is un. What's the word I want to use? He's a prodigy. He is the best been... quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck. Okay. Yeah. Okay. People have said that a lot. And you think he's going to live up to that hype? I do. I think he is the out of the group of five uh, that are kind of we're going to talk about today. One of the surefire bets that almost impossible to be a bust. Almost impossible to be a bust. Right. The kind of player that elevates a team and a franchise to be better than their roster says they should be. Very quickly, maybe not the first year, but in the second or third year, they're going to get to the playoffs and they're going to elevate their team. And I think by this point, everyone knows we're, we're talking about Clemson's Trevor Lawrence. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Trevor Lawrence. I do think that when we were doing our research on this, watching some tape uh, over the last couple of weeks, it is clear that he is by far the safest pick in the mm -hmm. draft. Absolutely. That, exactly, that is exactly what he is. And for a team... Like Jacksonville picking number one, who hasn't had that guy at quarterback, you can't go wrong. Not even this team can mess that up. I mean, I don't think they feel like they have a choice. No, 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 no. I feel like this is a situation where if you don't take Trevor Lawrence and he ends up being what everybody promised, even if the guy that you take is good, that probably gets you fired. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Urban Meyer is going to make that mistake. So let's talk about some of the things that the pros that people have on him. First, first things first is he is the prototypical quarterback body that people were and have been looking for. He has a huge frame. He has a massive arm, broad shoulders, tall, and he's athletic and could definitely move around. He's not a statue. I think the most important part is despite facing scrutiny every single day of his college football career from the moment he stepped on the campus at Clemson he has lived up to the hype he has won national championships he has been a great thrower of the football he's been athletic he doesn't have any off-field scandals that is with all the scrutiny and what's ironic is this week you know quarterbacks are having their pro days I'm on Twitter oh Justin Fields put that ball on a rope I'm like <laughs> okay okay great but pro days don't prove anything you're throwing against nobody it's air. Trevor Lawrence, week to week, year after year, against top competition in the SEC, delivered. So a pod listener said uh, that pro days are the equivalent of the NBA three-point contest. And I actually really like that. Because, like, that is really what it is. There's no defender. Mm -hmm. They want to see your mechanics. They want to see how you want throw. They want to see your accuracy. Make the shots that you were supposed to make. I, I fully agree. Now, that being said, even though it's scripted, et cetera, if you look bad on your pro day, I'm not going to touch you with a 10-foot pole. Well, think about it, right? It's kind of, yeah. If you were supposed to be a three-point shooter, you showed up to the three-point contest with no one in front of you, and you couldn't sink it. But, for example, let me read you some, some headlines from previous pro days of Drafts Pass. Okay. So, LSU's Russell puts on impressive show for scouts. You know who that is. Jamarcus Russell, the one of the biggest busts ever. Uh, well, Paxton he Lynch watch film. Paxton Lynch flashes arm strength at Windy Pro Day. Oh, uh, Johnny Man Johnny Manziel of Texas A and M Aggies dazzles at Pro Day. Johnny could play; he just couldn't stay in the league. And personally. 2014 NFL Draft, Blake Bortles shines at Pro Day. And don't get me wrong; I got another one for you. Experts heap praise on Dwayne Haskins after Pro oh. Day. Does, okay. Do any of these sound good? Okay, even some a year of these later. people, some of these people were people who had all the talent, which is what the pro day shows. So like the Jamarcus Russells, the Johnny Manzels, the Dwayne Haskins, but the mental part of the game was not really there for them. Either the discipline, when we're talking about someone like Haskins and Manzel, or just like the willingness to study the game, Jamarcus Russell, like 
come on. He has the greatest NFL story of all time. What story is that? The being the biggest bust and, and robbing the Raiders? Yes, but more so that like back then, like I don't know if you've heard this story, but back then, you know, way back in dinosaur times, you'd get your film that you were supposed to go home and watch on CDs. Like DVDs. Mm -hmm. And they gave him a blank DVD the entire season. Like the entire season. And he did not notice that the DVD was blank. He didn't watch any of it. From he didn't week put him in. one to week 17. Because it's like 16 games but bye, right? He did not even try. They were like, eventually he's going to pop one of these in, right? And he's going to see that it's blank. He's going to come back. And he's going to be like, hey, guys, there was nothing on this CD that you gave me. Uh, what's going on? But no, he literally did not notice, which meant he put not even an attempt to watch it once. No, and I bring this up in particular because Trevor Lawrence has been the least talked about quarterback in this draft process. Every other quarterback after their pro day, it's it's glowing reviews online, on social media, on ESPN, etc. Mm -hmm. Lawrence is not a guy we need to talk about because his talent is definitive, in my opinion. Okay, I'm with you. Now, the real rub is where we get at at number two. I feel like number two is people feel like it's locked. A lot of people feel like it's locked. Are you one of those people? Well, first off, first off, who you have at number two? Okay, so I, I have the Jets taking the quarterback from BYU, Zach Wilson. Um, Yeah, that is the kind of consensus number two pick right now. I think it's it's fine. I think it's fine if they didn't take him, though, and they took Justin Fields. Would I be surprised? Not at all. I would be based off what I've heard. Like, there's a lot of people hyping up this Zach Wilson guy like he is the next it. Chris Sims said he thought he was better than Trevor Lawrence. And what would Chris Sims know about quarterback? Oh, look, okay. Not like that, he ain't play the position. And Not like. <laughs> there's a reason he's 30-something working for Bleacher Report. That's all I'm going to say. All right, look. But, like. But, the biggest rub against Wilson is who, where he played at BYU and who he played against. Some would call that cupcake talent. And so the question is, can he do it against NFL type talent? And that's the thing that I actually think. Think about it like this. Yes, you are right. He played against significantly worse people, but he also played with significantly worse talent around him. So, yes, he was not playing against the corners and the DBs that are going to get drafted, but I guarantee not any of his receivers are going to get drafted in the first round or the second round. It's the difference. That's th fair. Those big school guys, sometimes they kind of get you because all of the talent around them is A1. So Mac Jones. <coughs> <laughs> look, look, that is a that is a big <laughs> knock on Mac Jones, though. Yes. And it is a reasonable one to have. And a lot of the great, great quarterbacks that we see come into this league are not the guys that played at the Alabamas. Not frequently the guys that play at Clemson. I mean, like, look, but like, seriously. So it's something to think about because it. So that is true. But I'll add, you know, when we're looking at all the quarterbacks and FBS for college football. Zach Wilson was pressured just 21% of his dropbacks, which is ultra, ultra low. And you got to think, you got to know if you're going to a bad NFL team to be drafted in the top three, there's not going to be a great O-line and there are going to be some good pass rushers. And so how will he perform under pressure? How, do, how will you perform when Von Miller's coming off the edge or Khalil Max coming off the edge and about to hit you? And I think, he, okay, so what, I, what I'm in the mind of is that he has the skill set to deal well with that situation he can throw off platform right he can throw on the move people have called it mahomes-esque the way that he can contort his body and throw and move around while he does it look i get it he's not mahomes we should not think he's going to be mahomes but the throwing off platform flick of the wrist rogers mahomes style thing he has shown his tape shows that he can do it so it's maybe i get it the pressure, talent, not there yet. But it's he has all the tangibles that you think, you know, with next level coaching, next level workout regimen can really unlock a lot of potential here. That's fair. I think um, it's a matter of fit. And will the Jets really build around him? The team itself, 
has not been fantastic at doing that with other quarterbacks in the past. I mean, people are still enamored with Sam Darnold, and yet we're talking about them drafting a quarterback. Look, no, no, no. I'm not going to let you get away with this one. Get away? For two words. Adam Gase. Uh, Ryan Tannehill went from how was this dude in the league to AFC cons- championship. Yes, yes. Consistently being amazing. And but, it's not like Vrabel is a super offensive minded coach. He's a defensive coach. I'm just saying, if that's true, then why move off of Darnold? I think that. Why not use this draft pick to make your team better as opposed to replacing the quarterback? Because you're in a situation that you were up with Trubisky where you're going to have to extend his uh, fifth year option. Yes. You have to extend his fifth year option and you're not sure you want to put that much money into him when you're not sure what he has. A lot of people say, you know, playing quarterback is a lot where you land. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And a lot how you start too. Mm -hmm. So he might have. Does, is Sam Darnold's confidence still there? You remember him seeing ghosts out there? Okay. Uh, yes, reasonable, but is that something that can be fixed? Are you are you willing to risk that if you are Robert Sala? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the answer is I, I don't think so. I think everything says the Jets will take a quarterback, so no. But, Okay. I think it's, I mean, Wilson's certainly deserving of the number two pick, but I'm telling you, out of the five guys we're going to talk about today, at least one's going to be a bust. I agree. I agree. Remember when we did our NBA draft stuff uh, and I was like, there's always one player that gets super hyped up as a smoke screen and they they don't really show up the way everybody thought. And I told you, I thought that guy was Denji at Vija. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the other, other picks are. The one in three picks are fire. Uh, he was he was at five, right? Yeah. I, and I'm like, I think he's the guy that, because everybody's like, oh, the Warriors really love him. He he was the smokescreen guy. And I was like, I hope he's not. They wanted I Wiseman. The I think him. they wanted Wiseman the yeah. whole time. And I thought he was the smokescreen and guy. And I think the Jets want Wilson. Uh, okay. So that brings us down to where people think the draft really starts. Mm-hmm. All right. And at number three, who are you taking? I mean, the, I think the number three talent is the quarterback from the Ohio State, Justin Fields. He talk about performing against high quality talent. The Big Ten is comes to college football. You're playing against the best of the best. The DBs you're playing against are almost all certainly NFL DBs that you will have to make throws against. And Justin Fields, despite not having a large sample size, was able to to perform and put up the numbers and the stats against top quality uh, college football talent, which is a in that in that conference on that team is a good indication of what you'll do in the NFL. I mean, Ohio State has been putting out high quality NFL talent for decades now. OK, so. Do you are you concerned any with this last year he's had? So two years ago, he obviously kind of dominated, ran rough shot all over everybody. He looked great this year. He had a couple more struggle games. And now the question a lot of people are asking are, are you going to get last year's Justin Fields or two years ago, Justin Fields? So I, I think sure that gives me a little bit of pause, but I think that a a smart team is not going to start Fields week one. I think he sits for at least six weeks of the season, learns a little bit. Cause I think one of the biggest cons that we saw last year was his ability to process the defense and decide where to throw the football at. And I think having him, or go through an entire NFL or a good chunk of the NFL offseason, work with the coaches, be able to break down film, sit behind another starting QB and learn, fixes some of those problems. I don't know if it's six weeks, eight weeks, whatever. It depends on who's in front of him and how well they're playing. But I think that sitting him for a little bit fixes some of those issues. Those are all things you can teach him how to process. I mean, look at... Is it? I think so. You So, okay... You have the you have the mind that you believe people. You believe it is a legitimate concern to be worried about Justin Fields' processor. Yes, I just don't think that it means he you shouldn't take him. I think it means that you should take him and not plan on starting him week one. Isn't that kind of the part that is the hardest to teach? Like you can teach your mechanics, you can teach them where the reads are, you can like teach them what to do in certain situations, but the speed in which someone processes information, is that really something that you can teach? 
I think it gets better with reps. And I think he is, so comparatively, he's a year younger than, for example, Trevor Lawrence. And so he hasn't had that extra year in college to be able to see the reps, to see the defenses, because some of it is you're just thinking. You're thinking, you're looking at it, you're trying to decipher the defense for the first time or second time, and you haven't seen this. But after you do it 10, 15 times, another 10, 15 times, 10, 15 games, et cetera, against top quality talent, you get a little bit better at it. Is he as naturally good as Trevor Lawrence was at it? No. But do I think he has the ability with a little bit of time and training and reps to literally get better at it? Absolutely. I don't think that he has enough talent. And going to Ohio State, I think he worked hard enough that given some time in an NFL system, he will be able to have the reps to be able to get better at that. I'm not saying it's going to be overnight, et cetera. For example, it took Aaron Rodgers three years to finally win his starting job. Now, he went at the end of the first round, but they had to rebuild his mechanics. He's talented, but they did have to rebuild his mechanics and teach him how to read defenses again. So I don't think that saying sitting Justin Fields for six weeks of the, his rookie season is ridiculous whatsoever. No, I'm I look, I'm with you. I I think there are a lot of pluses to Justin Fields. The first and foremost is like he is an athlete athlete. I think he ran mm-hmm. a four four today. Like honestly, like maybe actually literally today or yesterday he ran he ran his unofficial was a four four and he's very athletic. He can move around. He is definitely a quarterback that is mobile but does not break out of the pocket prematurely, Mm-mm. which this is good. Man. That patience is very good because a lot of the guys with that athleticism are quick to break out of the pocket, not let the play develop. And that is something that is good for him is that, like, he has the athleticism, but he's not over-relying on it. I, My biggest concern, my biggest pause for Justin Fields is his mechanics. They're very inconsistent. He does not always throw with the bottom half of his body. And granted, I guess, like, if you think he if you think at three he gets picked and they want to sit him for a while, let him absorb the game, kind of Mahomes X situation, which I think is a much better situation for a lot of guys. I'm not against it. I do think he is the third best quarterback in the draft, at least safest safe pick wise, not a very boom bust person. So where do you go for four? Um, I think four is Trey Lance, but really quickly on the, the statement on mechanics for fields, I, I think you're wrong. I think the numbers bear out that say that on 56% of his passes, more than 10 yards downfield, uh, they were deemed accurate. And that is the third best in the what that, what, that year in the Power Five in 2019 behind Joe Burrow and Mac Jones. That's fantastic. Okay. That, you mechanics have to be good if you're that accurate 10 yards downfield. I actually don't think that is necessarily true for a lot of these college people. Mostly because, A, your receivers are wide fucking open, especially especially if you're Justin Fields, right, with the talent that you have on that team. But two, right, you see a lot of these quarterbacks come in, right, especially the young ones, and their mechanics aren't solid, but they do really well. It's kind of like Josh Allen. Josh Allen could throw the ball, and then when Josh Allen's mechanics got right, he was bombing like 70 yarders with no problem. It's like he is that talented physically. Is that like if he does not use his whole, this is like a thing that people said a lot about Trey Lance, uh, who's below him here. It's just like, dude, if you're using 100% of your body properly, you would be throwing bombs now, consistently. I, I think your pushback on, Fields' processing speed is accurate and legitimate. Um, I just think the the saying his mechanics are a problem is a little bit nitpicky. Like every nitpicky. quarterback okay. in coming into the NFL is going to have some mechanic problems. They have not worked with NFL kind of coaches. And any coach is going to want to tweak and change their quarterback's throwing mechanics coming out of college. I think Mac Jones' mechanics are actually fantastic. Talk about a guy who had talent all around him. We'll get to there in a second. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. use your argument against you in like two minutes. Uh, no, I'm 100% okay <laughs> with that. Like, th- that's the reason why he's not at two or three. So, at four. Trey Lance, North Dakota State University. We know the other quarterback who came out of there, Mr. Wentz. Hey, look. Who did look good for the first two or three years of his career. And then kind of things deteriorated after that. But I think Trey Lance is just a physically gifted quarterback. And I think 
you know, I saw a meme. They were like, you know, you order Patrick Mahomes off a of wish and you get Trey Lance. Okay. And you can say that, but I'm like, mm, a poor man's Patrick Mahomes is still probably a pretty damn good quarterback. I agree. Uh, I think that he is a just phenomenal athletic talent. I think he's like 6'4", 225. He didn't run a 40 at his pro day, but there's a good guess if based on the tape watching him play in that offense and running around and avoiding defenders, he a pure athlete. Yes. The yes. question is, how good is he at quarterback? I think he likes a little bit of the unknown around him. Absolutely. Like, I think it's actually going to be a plus for him. I'm with you. I'm with you. I have a lot of major concerns about Trey Lance. I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm going to say this now because I just want to be honest. Trey Lance feels like he has the potential to Trubisky somebody. Uh, I don't think so. I think what he's put on tape has been better than what Trubisky had his one year in North Carolina. But okay, And this is is a much... That's actually my entire point. One, he's really only played one year, and he threw like 18 times a game when he threw. He did not throw the ball frequently. Unless you're going to put him in Lamar Jackson's system, that will not cut it in the NFL. So he has like no reps. He has not really thrown a lot in that one year that he played, and he only played one game last year because like they had one exhibition game uh, at North Dakota State, which I think actually hurt him more than it helped him because he looked bad in that game. So, like, it's just like their sample size is so small. It is so small that while you have seen all of the freak athleticism and the ability to, like, the ceiling is there. The ceiling is jump out the fucking gym. I agree. But, ooh, as a person who just got off Trubisky as a Bears fan, yeah. I think this is just a case of you got burned and you're like, ooh, I'm a little gun shy on this one. And I think that, I think you're wrong. I think that North Dakota State's honestly a better football school than North Carolina is. And I don't think the, I think, yes, he did not look good in the one game, but that's more of a a kind of effect of the pandemic and him not playing in a power five school than anything else. And I think given some time in an NFL offense, maybe sitting behind a quarterback, for a long time, maybe a whole year, we can easily get him to be the the you know preeminent quarterback who has is just dripping with talent. Okay, okay. So then that clearly brings us to number five. You've been hinting at it for a while. Mac Jones. Mac Jones. So I mean, his biggest thing is I mean the biggest he looks good. There's no like oh he has problems with accuracy or mechanics no or off bad the field. Tape. There's no bad tape, but the the that's the actually the, the the problem is that the situation was it too easy? Did he have too many good receivers? Is the team because we know Alabama, Alabama when it comes to college recruiting, when you look at the number of five star recruits on that team, oh my god, they have the most in the country, um, saving it everybody else, and it's it's everybody else, and it's not. <laughs> I guess the next two closest would be Ohio, Ohio State, State and then probably Clemson. Yes, but. Even then, it's it's it. There's a, a whole wide river in between Alabama and then the others, and the that the biggest con is can he do it with inferior talent? Because at every position in Alabama, there is an NFL prospect. His guy is better than yours, absolutely. And they're just if you got, for example, who's uh who's the receiver that came out of Alabama? Was it Jerry Judy? He Alabama a couple years ago. That would be last year or last year. He'd been uh, office rookie. Yeah, right. If you got if you're throwing to him against some probably good corner, maybe even a second, third round draft pick in the NFL. He maybe gets some time on the field, but he's not a he's not a star. Yes. Okay. Is your receiver gonna beat beat him off the line and be wide open about five yards? I agree. Absolutely. Now it did Mac Jones put it on him when they were open? He always Oh he did. He always he read through his progressions very well. He read through his progressions very fast. His mechanics were super consistent. He has a lot of upside, and it seems like his floor should hopefully be very high. I feel like a lot of people were saying Mac Jones, you know, 15th pick, mid-late round pick. Now he has a lot of hype, and people are like, oh, no, Mac Jones. You know, he might be up there at three. He might be up there at five. People are thinking that, you know, maybe Shanahan likes him. Perhaps. Looks like Matt Ryan. He plays like other Jimmy thing- Garoppolo. I guess the other thing is that there's not been a lot of great quarterbacks come out of Alabama, which is the other kind of thing that gets people pause is that mm-hmm. Alabama's great at producing 
skill position players, particularly on, you know, the receivers, they just, they keep sending those out. Those are like a factory. You got Julio Jones and the Amari Coopers and just keep sending them out and the Jerry Judys, whoever. But do they, who, what quarterback from Alabama can you name? No, I'm, I am 100% with and so you. And so I think he is number five, but only, it's not a talent thing. He's not just dripping with athletic ability. He's good. Oh, he's, no, he's the he's, least athletic of the yeah, five. That he, we've he's fine, about. but the lack of athleticism, the easy situation, and the superior talent on his team gives you pause that he can succeed in a situation where, like Russ, your offensive line is bad, or Tom Brady, you didn't have good receivers for a little while there. Etc. Can he thrive in those kind of situations in the NFL? I okay. So I'm gonna say with the bad O line, Mac Jones cannot thrive. I'm going to say with less talented receivers, I do believe Mac Jones can thrive, especially in a good system, because it's clear he gets through his reads relatively fast and he makes an accurate throw, which means that even if his receivers aren't worlds better than the other guy, I, he throws with anticipation which means he's not waiting, even though his receivers are probably going to be wide open very frequently. He is not always waiting for them to be wide open before he throws the ball. And that is the thing that I think separates him from a lot of other Alabama quarterbacks is that he is throwing them open. Granted, like they could have gotten open on their own, but he is throwing them open. So I think like that is something that is a huge plus and that I think that if, especially if he falls, some team is going to get really lucky with Mac Jones. Okay. Now, we've kind of are um, pretty solid agreement on who the top five will be. Mm-hmm. But if you had to take a guess right now based on your research, who is the sleeper pick? Who is the guy who could possibly push Trey Lance down or Mac Jones down to being the fifth or sixth quarterback pick instead of the third or fourth? So the name that I've heard the most is Kellen Mond. Right. I want to say that's AMU. Uh, for Mon, uh, no, no, no. He's Texas A&M. A&M. What did I say? AMU? Mm-hmm. I don't know. AMU where. isn't even a thing. Maybe somewhere in Florida. <laughs> like, yeah, FAMU, I guess. Yeah. A&M. Wow, okay. <laughs> so, yes, Texas A&M. Look, I think there's a lot of upside to this guy. I, not, not a lot of people saw his games, saw his tape, but he is very athletic. He is very athletic, and it's clear that he is kind of a rough, rough pick. I think Kellen Mond's best situation will not be moving up and pushing one of these people down, but Kellen Mond gets into a situation where he's picked in like the 20s below, which means he's not going to like a really terrible team. Can he go to Denver? Isn't Denver like the sixth pick or no, sorry, eighth or something like that? But that's still, I mean... That's down there a little bit for quarterbacks. It's going to be a run, possibly. Um, they can't get any of the top guys. Could they get him and still go boom with him instead of bust? I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like... Look, maybe they can. I think that's putting a lot of pressure on Kalamon, who, while he has very good mechanics, I have not... We have not really seen him, like, I guess, break teams down with his mind. He can definitely do it with his body, he can definitely do it with his athleticism. I think there's a lot of high upside to this pick. This is kind of another one of those people where I would like for them not to throw you into the fire. That's fair. I think the uh, the kind of sleeper that could come up is Kyle Trask out of Florida. Very Not really talked about a lot. Improved a ton in 2020. The kind of one downside is the question of his mobility. He's not mobile at all. He's the equivalent of Tom Brady when it comes to mobility. And in today's NFL, the the idea of what a good quarterback looks like has changed. A good quarterback now is at least able to maneuver the pocket and is mobile. And the biggest con on Trask is he's not mobile at all. And so I think either Trask or Mond could surprise some people and go higher than we think. Because I think there will be a run, like we said, on quarterbacks, the kind of top 10 of the draft. And so top 10 to 12 picks of the draft. And so I think those could be two possible sleeper picks. Okay. That's interesting. I, well, I, I feel like in the top 10, we'll probably get three to four quarterbacks. I don't I know if four. we'll get all five, but we'll get three to four. And I don't think it'll be any of the guys that we named. Just like, don't, don't make another Daniel Jones mistake. 
if you think Kellen Mond or you think Kyle Trask is your guy. Just wait. No one's going to take him. Just fucking wait. Yes. No one's talking about him. Like, honestly, I think people would be so much more plussed with Daniel Jones if they got him with their second pick in the draft instead of their first. Absolutely. Okay. So, we hope you all enjoyed our breakdown of the top five quarterbacks in this NFL draft. We're going to keep giving you our draft coverage and the rankings that we have on some of the key positions. If you did not know, this is part of a larger podcast, the Fly Route Podcast, that you can catch on Spotify, Apple Music, the video version of it drops on YouTube. So if you subscribe to this video and hit the notification bell, you will be notified every time we drop a new episode. We appreciate each and every single one of you for listening and drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Also, leave a comment. Tell us and let us know what position group you want to see covered next or what extra content you think should come to this channel. We want to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to listen to this video. Did you know that this video is part of a larger Fly Route podcast? Look us up wherever you watch podcasts. We are on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere take the time subscribe we appreciate you while we have you here don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button and while you're at it don't forget to hit the notification bell otherwise you will miss some of our youtube videos that's just the way youtube works and don't forget to follow us on facebook twitter and instagram at the fly route pod